eBay. No, what? actually, actually, the phone came from an elderly aunt who had died a few years back, and I had always thought it was a cool prop, so I just grabbed it. But the answering machine is a vintage 1984 answering machine, which I got off eBay. <laughs> yeah. Where else do we find stuff that? Yes. That old. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, yes. How come there was no uh, interviews with the band members themselves and no music? Um, yeah. I didn't want any. To be honest with you, when I uh, this project sort of fell into my lap, I was actually in the original version <coughs> of this movie. Uh, a woman named Hansi uh, Oppenheimer had uh, was working on the film, and um, she was interviewing a lot of replacements fans. And I was in it because I had put the replacements in my first novel, the second greatest story ever told, which came out in '91. And um, she wrote to me after uh, uh, Friends with Benefits, my last movie, was pretty much I had just finished production on it, and she said, "Help." I, I can't finish this movie. I don't know what to do with it. And so I, I, I started thinking about it. It's like, what could I do with this? I knew I could never direct something with someone else. I, I'm not really someone who plays well with others. Um, and I was lying in bed with my wife one night, and that, that night thinking, like, what can I do to make this movie a movie that I would want to make? And I started thinking, I don't believe in God, but I believe in the replacements. And we... God's always covered in movies, but you never see him, you never hear him. So I said, hmm, what if I do a music documentary where we never see the band, never hear the band? And I think my wife at that point turned to me and said, you're crazy, go to sleep. <laughs> uh, and I fell in love with that idea. In fact, that to me was the challenge as a filmmaker, um, to somehow tell their story without ever showing them or hearing them, but still making people I, I think I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to arm fans that had never heard. I'm sure hopefully there are some people in here who honestly don't know who the replacements are. I'm hoping maybe there are a few that you can go and discover the band on your own way. You've got all the you know you've got all the ammunition. You know it's like what, whoever you relate to, you can go and you know listen to the songs that they like. Or for the people who already know the replacements, love the replacements, you're already hearing the songs in your head, and you're going to go home now. It, it, and the first thing you're going to do is pop on the old vinyl. Um, you know so. It, I, it was just really, to me, an interesting challenge. And also, I'm really not a fan. I feel that once a band has broken up, and especially once a member is permanently gone, all of those documentaries, to me, just resemble VH1 documentaries. I really don't like them. And I felt that this band deserved something more than that. And let's face it, this is a band that has bucked tradition and spit in the face of tradition <laughs> at every single, every single chance they got. So this was sort of a perfect documentary since I was doing the same thing, more or less, in their honor. Uh, it was actually really easy because one, I didn't have to deal with any freaking actors, um, <laughs> and um, it was really—I I really just like telling stories. And for this, I remember after we got our very first interview, uh, the, the very first day of interviews, Jack Rabbit was one of our interviews, uh, interviewees. And I remember after that day, I remember turning to my DP and saying, "We have a movie," because the storytelling was just so vivid and real. And I, I mean, I knew the tail of the replacement, so now it's just getting people to say the lines to more or less fill in the story. And there are a lot of things that even surprised me. I mean, I think you guys will notice, you always hear about Big Star and Alex Chilton. Okay, in 145 interviews, now, in people who <laughs> hung out with the band and, you know, went on tour with them, no one ever mentioned that the band listened to Big Star or Alex Chilton. So part of me almost started wondering, hey, this is, maybe this is just something the press sort of like latched onto and thought, Nice, easy thing, you know, as opposed to like, you know, Robin Hitchcock, tons of people said they, they were in love with Robin Hitchcock, you know, uh, but maybe Robin Hitchcock wasn't as much of, you know, uh, wasn't as, as a, a cool thing for the press to latch on to. Um, you know, so even I learned stuff about the band. Um, but it, I, it was really just about telling a story, and I really loved it. I mean, to the point where the new movie, my next fiction movie I'm working on, I decided not to use a script. Yeah, that was my next question. What's your next project? Uh, I've got four in development. I had four in development when this one started, and it was sort of like whichever one caught fire first was the one I was just going to go with. So uh, there's uh, uh, document. I, there are two real passions in my life. One is the replacements. The other is New Haven Brick Oven Pizza. <laughs> one of them is on Brick Oven Pizza. Uh, really? Yeah, and uh, this, it's called Pizza Love Story. And uh, I'm also working. I, there's a possibility that my second favorite band of all time. I might be doing a documentary on them, but I can't say anything more than that. Um, and the other, I'm sorry, what? You're going to make me have to go back to New Haven, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
for pizza. It's the only place you can go. Uh, and uh, the other two are just are, the other two are dark dramas. So which, whichever sort of like comes through first. Yes. How many times have you been seen? One. This movie? Today, first okay. time. This is the, first the premiere. This is the premiere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what, are, what are the plans for? Uh, well, ever since the Rolling Stone story blo uh, broke, we've sort of been like, it's been exploding to the point where I was originally down here for like a week of vacation. The week of vacation came a week <laughs> on my laptop. Huh? Yeah. Um, and same thing for my wife. Um, but uh, we've, we're right now we're in probably 15 film festivals, which is to me was amazing because you never get, I mean, that's before it ever premieres. Uh, and people just inviting us. And also we've got like distributors sort of coming out of the woodwork, talking to us, producers, reps. So hopefully something good will happen. You know, I, uh, my ultimate goal hopefully is uh, like a really small little theatrical run in like New York, Los Angeles, Minneapolis. Yes. The first time you heard The Replacements. First time I heard The Replacements, they opened for REM in 1983 at Toad's Place in New Haven. I thought they were the worst freaking band I had ever heard in my life, to the point where we were leaning up against the stage, me and my girlfriend, and we literally turned our backs on them. Wow. They were horrible. And it was like, and, and six months later, I hear uh, I Will Dare, and it's just like, whoa. It was sort of the same reaction to the guys in the movie had, like, what, what's this? And yeah, because all of a sudden, I Will Dare is like, wow, it's, it's REM, but better, you know? And, Anyone else? Yes, over there, sir. Well, this is really a question. It's just, uh, uh, I'm on the, the member of the uh, Men Without Ties. We've been following you for okay. a year. Okay. Woohoo! And absolutely thank you for coming to Tampa first. So I'm the first one on the board tomorrow to be able to say it was great. Well, thank you. And, 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 and um, actually, thank Tampa for also, yeah, they, they know, gave there's, me. There's, there's many people yeah. on that one site. Of, there is one of the people to thank right there. Yeah, this well, is, Every people to that, those folks yeah. who don't know them. Yeah. Many people yeah. on that site want you to go all over. We're, we're, we're working and, on uh, everything right thank now. Thank you for, I, I gave, you got me in on the credits. I was the last person that, <laughs> when you said, we're just filming it, we'll get you in on that. But um, no, it was excellent. I think we always said on the uh, site, oh, well, why don't you put the music? But I mm -hmm. think you nailed it with, yeah. we're, we're thirsty as heck right now to go out and listen to my, you know, I've right. been a fan since. In New Haven, I lived in Sag Harbor. I used to get the old college radio across mm -hmm. Long Island Sound. That's how I got to the places. But I think you did exactly what uh, you, you gave us on the site, saying, you know, this isn't about the music. This isn't a VH1. And, um, well, you know, it's, I think it's also, too, a lot about the lo love we have for any band and yeah. how, as Robert Vodish, my farm boy with the turkey, says, yeah, that, um, yeah. you know, well, says, yeah. Like, like it, yeah. they become part of your family. Yeah, and yeah. as a replacement fan, I think you all feel the same. I mean, I was probably... You know, started in '85. I saw him in '87, and mm -hmm. you know, all through it. But um, it's it's just everybody you get. You know, it's, you just nailed it on the head, though, with the way you brought it all together. Thank you. It, without having the music, like you said, where everybody was. It was very interesting how you got it to that. Thank you. And we are uh, I'm dying to hear right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and one more. Yes. Well, I, I need to be a little fan stalker for a moment. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, not at the, well, no, I, I have a new book that's finished, yeah. and we've been waiting to put it out forever, and it's just, I, I, I if I could clone myself, it would have been out already, but it's just time. I, 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 I Facebook you all the time, and I need to do it in person. I'm jonesing for Hazmat Diaries, and it's freaking killing me. Well, it's, you know it's on, it's, it's published now. It knows. Yes. Oh, you can get it on Amazon. I can. Yeah. But it's, like, how, or how is it published? As both book or Kindle. No, unfortunately, it's just a book. Sorry. Yeah, well, it was, it was before. It's, we did, uh, Hazmat Diary was a, a multimedia site that we did uh, back in 1998, 1999, uh, where I took a book and completely did, like, music and, oh and pictures and everything, video and everything. Unfortunately, it was in a time before no one had broadband. So, well, very few people did. Very few. So, you know, and we had it up for probably about eight years, and we finally just took it down because it was too expensive to keep up, you know. No, sorry, make, it again, make it again. Make yeah. it again. Make uh, it again. What? Can I? I'm can sorry, I say? I want to add one thing, though, yeah. to people. As as an independent filmmaker, th there is nothing that helps us like the reviews on IMDb uh, or Netflix or anything. In this case, it's probably only IMDb is the only place you can go. If you like the movie, 
spend 10 minutes and write a nice little review. It really helps us in terms of getting distribution, in terms of getting a DVD deal. I, seriously, I got a DVD deal for You Are Alone because of the 21 great reviews on the, the film festival audiences. So if you like the movie, please you'll spend a few minutes. IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, look up Color Me Obsessed and just write you know, 10 lines about it, if you would. That'd be great. If you didn't like the movie, just kind of like forget that part. <laughs> <laughs>